Hello everyone, and welcome to another sketchbook flip through. This sketchbook here is from June to December 2016. I didn't work on it a ton over the summer, but most of the work in it was done during the first term of my senior year of my illustration degree. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first sketch I did in here is just sort of a, a fairy, kind of based off of local rabbits and foxtail barley. Um, I thought she was kind of cute and I meant to do more, um, but I never got around to it. And some sketches of a creature I designed called Allophilus, sort of a take on a griffin in a way. Now these horses here I drew from life at the Calgary Stampede, which is an agricultural and rodeo show in my city. And this I did on some hot press fluid watercolor paper. I ended up not really liking this paper very much. It's much too smooth for me and it doesn't absorb the paint in the way that I'd like. Um, I actually still have tons of it left, so I just use it for tests now. These sketches are just done with ballpoint pen. And around this time I got a job with Canadian Geographic doing an illustration gig, so I was just doing some planning on this page and then my sketching on this page. I've included here a pheasant feather that I found. Um, I actually found a kill of a pheasant, probably by a hawk or an owl. Um, I didn't find any other parts of the pheasant except for tons of feathers, so that's a pretty good um, indication that it was plucked and then eaten. So a little bit of nature insight for you. This is just more of that illustration gig here. I included a tiny sample from a juniper, um, and just so I could really study the texture and pattern of the leaf. And here I did a style test for the art director, um, just to see if they wanted more of a line-based approach or more of a rendered approach, and we ended up going with this one, which was tons of fun for me. Just some revision sketches here, and a clipping from Porter Magazine. More revisions. And here's a different job, um, but it also involves trees, and that was lots of fun as well. I got a new watercolor called Quinacridone Gold, and I was really interested in it and used it in a lot of doodles in this sketchbook and in other sketchbooks too. I still really enjoy that pigment. It's so diverse and uh, a really great watercolor. So this page here is the start of school, and we did a world building project. So I chose Rokanon's World, which is a novella by Ursula K. Le Guin, and fleshed out the characters and creatures and plants for that planet. Uh, because it's a science fiction novella, but everything is described and all of the covers that are done for it are usually interpreted as being, you know, just humans and just earth vegetation and stuff like that. So I wanted to really play up the science fiction aspect of it and make a bunch of aliens. This was one design direction that I went through and they ended up looking a lot like the characters from Avatar, <laughs> James Cameron's Avatar, so I pulled back from that. I actually I got rid of the, the ears. The ears were what made it look really like the Navi. This is the sort of musculature and stature of these aliens that I designed. And uh, there's one human character from a human planet in the book. so. I designed him sort of based on uh, descriptions of Genghis Khan, <laughs> um, and he was of sort of a Mongolian face shape and, and face features, um, but then I added red hair and green eyes, like some of the descriptions of Genghis Khan, just to make him a little more interesting and still genetically believable because he is just a human after all. There's some more of the aliens there some life drawings of meerkats and life drawings of Komodo dragons. 
at my local zoo they had an elderly Komodo dragon named Loka and she was so nice and very lazy, so a great model, but she actually passed away from old age. She was the oldest Komodo dragon in captivity, so we call her Grandma. <laughs> Rest in peace, Grandma Loka. Here are some uh, Rias. I started drawing them and then they went away, so I finished it with like a dumb cartoon. <laughs> Just some more fashion clippings from magazines. This project here was another school project to do mascots. Um, so I did them like they were zoo mascots or zoo boy scouts or something like that based on the animals there. These are some thumbnails for another project I did. Um, and then this is the science fiction project again. I was designing a bunch of like fish and um, shellfish and creatures to inhabit this world and then after designing these I started basing the clothing of the alien race on the creatures so they ended up having a lot of these shells incorporated into their outfits because that would have been the materials that would be available to them to use. This creature here is a flying um, carnivore. They domesticated them in the novel to serve as valiant steeds um, and the description basically is that they're flying tigers um, but I wanted to incorporate different elements here so the skull has a bit of a dinosaur aspect to it um, and also a little bit of crocodile a little bit of Demetrodon um, but also some tiger as well I got this grid paper in a notebook that I had and even using the grid paper I found it difficult to make the figure exactly proportionate, um, symmetrical on both sides, but it was fun to use. <laughs> and here I was refining the face of the alien creatures a bit more. My teacher wasn't feeling the face, so I actually elongated it and based it more on real animals. So I've got some sketches here of kangaroos and um, antelope and sort of combine that with human to make a better looking face for my aliens. These are just some sketches from my social studies class, just in the lecture hall, so a lot of looking at the back of people's heads. It's a great place to sketch if you don't mind the back of people's heads. Some more of the science fiction story here, and some more of the mascot project here. So the mascots I ended up having were a dinosaur, a caribou, a Komodo dragon, a rhea, and a meerkat, and so they were like a scout group, and the dinosaur was the scout leader, and these were all the little students. These are some plants that I designed for the science fiction project I was doing, and a few more sci-fi creatures. I did a lot of work for that project, and even though it was all pencil sketches, um, that's actually what I handed in was pencil sketches, so I formatted them into a book in InDesign and set it up to print, On the, although I didn't print it, it is ready to print at any time basically, because I did all the work beforehand. the mascot, the caribou, and the dinosaur. And after I did all of that design work for the science fiction story, I did these pen and ink drawings of the main characters. So these are just Statler pigment liners on Bristol board, and I think they turned out really well. I still really like these drawings, and I think they, I think they look really great. I think pen and ink has such a nice quality to it. I also did a funny little poster for a project. The poster itself didn't turn out very well, but basically what I did was I needle felted all of the elements of it and did a Star Wars poster, which was very nice of my teacher to just let me do something Star Wars. But I'll show you here, this is the little Ewok that I needle felted. <laughs> 
and he's the only thing I have left from the project. I threw out all the other stuff because it took up a lot of space. I made a whole diorama and everything. Um, but it was really fun to needle felt this little guy, and he actually stands up by himself. So yeah, that's my Ewok. And I also did a poster of a Darwin quote, and so these are just some thumbnails trying to figure out composition by really simplifying it down. Um, and I find if I'm getting really bored with my sketchbook, it helps to do simple things like just use a pencil crayon instead because then the, the colors are more interesting and it, it helps me do the, the boring work like um, thumbnails. I find thumbnails very boring. They're necessary, but they're not my favorite. I don't have a, a blast doing them or anything. Here are some funny birds and a few environment sketches. These were pretty last minute, so I'm not too thrilled with them, but I did them. <laughs> and here I was working on some illustrated sort of type forms. This was the composition I went with for the Darwin poster, and then I just had to figure out how to do the lettering. Um, I used a lot of tracing paper to figure out how it would look and um, to layer the words on top of each other and move them around. Here are some paleontological creatures. This is a cynodont, and this is another cynodont. Um, I just did them up in different ways, more of a scaly animal, more of a furry animal. Until they find mummified cynodonts, we won't really know, but it's fun to draw them both ways. Um, that's a sketch of Natalie Portman, and this is a weird page, huh? For Christmas, I made a card of a Townsend's Solitaire, which is a type of bird, and uh, I sold these at the school art fair, and they did fairly well. Here are some sketches based on photographs I have, and also on drawings done by Terrell Whitlatch. This one of the Cardinal is a really useful diagram that she made, so uh, I felt like copying it and learning from it. And I also was doing a bighorn sheep painting, so there's just some studies there, some more studies here. I ended up going with more of a forward-facing look that I thought was much more regal. Uh, this is my aunt's dog. He's a Belgian Malinois named Rufus, and he's kind of funny because he hurt his leg. Um, it happens a lot with large dogs, and now he's not as active as he used to be, so he's getting fat in the middle, but his legs are still very skinny. <laughs> it's pretty cute, actually, for a big dog. Here are some thumbnails of a mammoth painting I did. Just some sketches here. These were supposed to be Jedi. Um, I was watching, I guess, what was coming out? Clone Wars, watching reruns, and also Rebels. I was very into, very into Jedi in the, in the winter. Some more critter thumbnails, critter sketches. This one here is closer to the final face I went with, although this one looked a little bit evil. It's the, it's, I used the body from that. Here's some arctic fox studies. Some more lettering. So these are all done by hand, just with pencil crayon, and uh, just figuring out a way that, that looks nice. I really enjoy the, the writing um, of Oliver Jeffers, and it's tough not to just copy it because it's so good. Um, so, trying out my own thing here. I, I like doing hand-drawn serif fonts. Something about that works well for me and also looks good to me, so keep doing that. And here are some sketches here that I did for Inktober in October, and I just glued them in here because I wasn't doing anything else with them. Some of them I sold, but the ones that I didn't, I just stuck in here for safekeeping. Yeah. And 
and uh, that's the book. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a few more sketchbooks that are currently complete and one that I'm finishing very soon, so there will be tons more flip-throughs in the future. If you'd like to see those, please subscribe, and if you have any questions or want to know anything about me, feel free to comment. I'm hoping to make a get-to-know-the-artist sort of video in the near future, so any questions you post, I'll probably use in the video. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you.